I'd like to welcome everyone today to our midweek teaching. We're going to be reading out of John today, the Gospel of Jesus, the Christ according to John. We're going to start reading in John 14, 1. My Bible, it reads, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also, and where I go, you you know and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Straight off the hatch we see without even trying, that oneness is a sham again in this simple reading. It's a total cop-out, modalism, it's false doctrine. It's damnable. Verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Makes it clear. Jesus makes it clear. This is red writing. He's not talking of himself. He's talking of Father. No one comes to my Father except through me. And again, John 14, 2, in my Father's house are many mansions. In my Father's house. So without trying, without even bothering to search, within six verses, Twice we see Jesus emphasizing about his father. So the only way that's my title of the teaching today. The only way. I am the truth is our verse. 6, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, the life. Nobody, doesn't matter whether they're rich, poor, no matter what race they are, doesn't matter what colour they are, no one comes to my Father who is in heaven unless they willfully and lovingly subject themselves to Jesus. He's the way to the Father. Now I know that many, there'd be multitudes that would disagree with this saying of Jesus. Because they believe there's an assortment of ways to heaven. Might be salvation by election. That's a real favourite among sinners, saved by grace alone. Uh, It's a lie. As is, as is, oneness, modalism, 
as is Mother Teresa. She wrote many books and she had many ways. And she said plainly, blatantly and openly, there are other ways. And um, if my memory is serving me well, Billy Graham said something on those lines too towards the end of his life. Reverend Sun Moon. He's another one with other ways. Hey. Yongi Cho. He's another one with other ways. Roman Catholic Church. looks out very clearly that Mary is the way. Multi-faith denominations, multi, multi-doctrine, multi-faith. So um, they're all rubbish tin gospels, aren't they? Rubbish tin gospels. Let's go to Isaiah, the prophet. Uh -huh. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Isaiah 45, 21. Tell and bring forth your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no other God beside me, a just God and a saviour. There is none beside me. Look to me and be saved all you ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. There's no other saviour, there's no other God, except the Father, Son and Holy Ghost. There's no other way. You can't have one. You have to have the three persons of the Godhead. You can't have one. Like the modalists just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's one God, three persons. It's very clear. Hebrews, can we go over there? Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5. What does it say there? Five nine Hebrews five nine, and having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Uh, and having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation for those who obey him. So. We come to see here these conditions. These conditions to salvation. These commands. These requirements. To be met in order to be saved from hellfire eternal. And to be a partaker of the blessing eternal blessings and bliss. Not to mention to live eternally in the immediate presence of the Father and the Lamb. Hey. 
We know we must be born again. This time of a man, the son of man, Jesus, Christ, born of the water of the word, born of the spirit of God, through true repentance, which brings true deliverance and deliverance from sin once and for all and bears true fruit. Right? That's John 3, 3 and 5. 1 Peter 1, 23. Born of immortal seed, immortal seed. Okay. And of course, we got John 8 30 to 36. If we abide in the Word, if we abide in the Word, we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. Nothing and no one, nothing else, no one else can make you free. Only the truth. Jesus said, he's the truth. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. So he said he, he has a Father. He said he has a father and he said if it wasn't so I would have told you but it is so he has a father in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you so <laughs> hey? But I go to prepare a place there for you. Eh? And he'll come again. Take you there if we're faithful to him. We also must be water baptized, fully submerged in water. We see that in the writings of Mark, don't we? Just take a quick look there in Mark. Matthew, Mark. Luke and John. Matthew, Mark. Um, yeah, 16, Mark 16. And the verse is, Mark 16, and it says, He who believes and is baptised will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. He who believes and is baptised will be saved. Eh? And then also, let's go to Matthew 3. Matthew 3. Glory to the Lamb. Matthew 3. 16. Then Jesus, when he had been baptized, came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove 
and alightening or alightening him upon him and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased hang on hang on hang on what have we got here hey we got three here we we got Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Verse 16, Matthew 3. Then Jesus, when he had been baptized, he was water baptized. He came up immediately from the water, and behold, there was John the baptizer baptizing him. And the heavens were open to him, and he, he saw the Spirit of God. Tangible. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a lightning upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my son. So if this is my beloved son, he must be the beloved father speaking because he said he's my son in whom I am well pleased. So there it is. An excellent defence. an excellent even destruction of modalism the ways of men and women seemeth right but the way thereof is death it's only the way of the Lord that is true and life giving so there's commands, requirements and conditions on salvation, isn't there? It's no rubbish tin gospel. We must be disciples, disciplined by the Christ, if we're going to be saved and we're going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Disciplined by the Christ. Followers of Jesus' way. Doctrine. Let's go to Luke. Can we go over to Luke here? Luke 14. Luke 14. And the verse is... Yeah, 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. For whoever does not bear their cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. There you go. What's he meaning there by hate? Hate your wife and children and brother and sister. It means to love less. In that particular case. That Luke uh, fourteen twenty six is a good parallel to Matthew ten thirty four to thirty nine, where Jesus said he did not come to bring peace but a sword and to divide the household, 
sort out who's his and who aren't his. Sound like uh, conditions? Sound like requirements? Does it sound like commands? Of course, of course. Of course it is. It's not once saved, always saved. And then we're going to go over to, um, let's say, let's go over to, to John. Go there. These are all scriptures we're familiar with. To John. Verse 9. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you does not bring this doctrine. Do not receive him into your house or greet him. For he who greets him shares of his evil deeds. You see that there? In verse 9, once again, modalism is crushed. Oneness. Oneness is crushed to pieces. Whoever sins does not abide, live in the doctrine of Christ. How many times I've been told doctrine doesn't matter, that doctrine only brings division. That's what it's designed to do. Doctrine is the sword of the Spirit. Doctrine is Jesus' teaching. Doctrine severs bone from marrow, gel and soul from spirit and discerns the thoughts and intents of a man and a woman's heart. Whoever transgresses and does not, whoever sins and does not abide in the doctrine of the Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has the Father and the Son. You see, it's it's not as the modalist and oneness say that Jesus is Father. Because if Jesus was Father, it wouldn't be the Father and the Son. The, the Father and There's the joining link and the sun. So modalism's been punched out. King hit, if you will, Jesus is the king. Oneness. King hit knocked out of the arena totally once and for all I the father and 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 the son and 2 John 9 where it says the father and the son is another parallel to John 14 21 they parallel beautifully don't they because scripture confirms scripture so in John 14 21 and where it says in 2 John 9 the father and the son John 
14, 21 says, He who has my commandments and keeps it, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Verse 23, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we, there it is, there it is, we, we will come to him and make our home. See? We will come to him and make our home. And in 2 John 9, he who abides in the doctrine of Christ has father and son. We will make our home with him. What do you think of that? If you like that makes it so clear makes it so clear so are there conditions are there requirements are there commands of course there is of course there is in order to be saved but they say oh, grace alone grace grace church grace alone home is nothing for you to do. You're you're uh, adding to the word if you say that you have to obey. You're teaching salvation by works if you say you have to do something. Huh? Jesus said, "If you love me, keep my commands." John fourteen twenty one. If you love me, you will keep my commands, and then my Father will love you. It's so clear. Those two major dead, dead end, dead end doctrines of the last days. Dead end. Abbas doctrine. The last day, the devil's doctrines. Once saved, always saved. And oneness. Devil's doctrines of the last days. Hey. We must be disciplined. Why do you call me Lord? You don't do what I say. You don't want. You don't do. I didn't know there was anything to do. They say, once saved, always saved, Baptist. Nothing to be done. He's done it all. Is that right? You don't have to do anything. But he said, you don't do what I say. So you have to do something. <laughs> Luke 6.46. Luke 6.46. Nothing to be done. That's why Jesus said you must be converted. There's nothing to be done. <laughs> You have to be converted from sinner to saint, and darkness to light, and unholy to holy. Let's go to Matthew and see what Matthew says. In Matthew 18. In verse 3, Assuredly I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. 
So you've got to be converted and you've got to be humble. What if you're not converted? And what if you're not humble? If you're uh, not humble, you're proud. And the Bible says, he puts the proud down. <laughs> he puts the proud down. He chops them down. The proud. And what does he do with the dead branches that are grafted into him? It says clearly that he cuts them off and throws them into the fire. John 15, 1 to 6. But the branch was in him. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit. Hey? He cuts it down. He breaks it off. But you don't have to do anything. Hey? What about... Um, if we go over to Revelation, just for a minute. Revelation, I'm going to go to chapter 12. I'm going to go to chapter 12, and I'm going to read verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. So we have to overcome. That's another condition. You've got to overcome. And they overcame by what Jesus done at the cross. And by the word of their testimony. And love not their lives unto death. And what about um, Revelation 22? What does it say there? Revelation 22, 11. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still we got to be righteous we got to be in right standing we have to live holy ultimately we are the righteousness of uh, God through Jesus righteousness of Father through Jesus um, children of Abraham sons of Abraham so to speak And, of course, Revelation 22, 14, Blessed are those who do his commands. He's talking about Jesus. That they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city, but outside are dogs. Sorcerers, sexually immoral, murderers, adulterers, and whoever loves and practices a lie. Verse 15 makes it very clear that outside those who won't enter the kingdom are sinners. You can sum that up. Sum total of Revelation 22.15 is sinners. Unrepentant sinners. Those who have not forsaken their sin for Jesus. Those who have not truly repented because if you haven't truly repented, you continue on in that sin. But if you truly repented, you're not going on in that sin. Because when you truly repent, the outworking of true repentance and, and, and the uh, reward for true repentance is to be delivered. That's how you know you're truly repentant. You're not doing the sin anymore. 
Amen. Isn't that wonderful? But they say that you have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. Nothing to be done. It's just saved by grace. It's just Calvinism. It's just Spurgeonism. Absolute predestination. God's going to get you there. God has selected his few and that's it. And um, he's going to get them there, hook or by crook. Hey? <laughs> it don't matter what you do. It's all prepaid. Hey? I'm going to go over to Romans. Tyler, a message to, today, the only way, the only way is, is Jesus' way. Romans. Let's go over to see what the Romans are doing. Romans 12. Romans 12. There's John there. And we go to Romans 12. And the verse is 2. Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. That means converted. But they say there's nothing to be done. What if you're not transformed? By the renewing of your mind through the word. You're not saved, are you? There's nothing to be done, they say. There is, there is, there's plenty to be done. And it's best we start right now and get the job done, get the work done. I like, um, I like what it says in Timothy, Paul writing to Timothy. Can we just go over there for a minute? There's nothing to be done. Well, what about this? In, in the writings of 1 Timothy 4.16, take heed to yourself and the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who will hear you. See that? There's nothing to be done. It's just saved by grace. No, it's saved by grace through faith. We, we, you know, we got a, a part to play in this salvation thing. For in doing this, you will save yourself and those who will hear. Continue. We must continue to take heed to ourselves. And we must continue in the doctrine. And what if you don't? Well, let's have a look and see what the Lord says if you don't. Let's go to Romans. Back to Romans, chapter 11. Romans 11, and the verse is... 22. Therefore consider the goodness and severity of God on those who felt severity but toward you goodness if you continue. See, there's that word that we just read in 1 Timothy 4, 16. Continue. 
they say you got nothing to do. There's nothing to be done. It's all done and dusted. You said a prayer. You sat in a chair. Now you're going to heaven. It's knock, knock, knock. You know. Hello. Oh, good day there. Do you believe in Jesus? I believe in Jesus. Do you hear that, Bill? He believes in Jesus. Write him up. You're saved. Let's go. We go to the next door. We're door knocking today. We've saved 300 people today. We knocked on 300 doors and they all said, I believe. Write him up, Bill. Now there's more, more, a lot more, more to to being saved from the eternal flames and torment of hell, the second death. We have to continue. We have to continue in the goodly news of glad tidings of good, goodly things, past, present, and future. Amen. Oh dear. Toward you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. Cut off. What do you think of that? I think it... I don't think I know it. It parallels with John 15, 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. <coughs> what do you think of that? John 15, 1. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are my, I should say, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you unless you abide. That le that means live, continue, continue in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. See, he who I am the vine. Uh, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch. With it. If we don't continue, we don't live and abide in him, in his doctrine, we're cast out. With it. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they're burned. You see that? You don't end up in heaven, you end up in hell. Even though you may have been in, grafted into the vine. Many be, have been born again. But few find the narrow gate. Many have been born again. But how many will be saved? The Bible says these are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God don't lead you into sin. Amen? There's another thing we have to do too. We have to beware. We have to beware. If we are to be saved to the uttermost, it is one thing to be converted to, to the Christ from some religion or uh, Roman Catholicism or maybe being converted to Jesus from the Baptist religion or Pentecostalism, Buddha, uh, Iglesias Nechristo or El Shaddai, Seventh-day Adventist. You may have been converted from Tao religion or some cult religion of Apollo Quivaloy in the Philippines or 
Reverend Sun Moon or Yonki Cho. But let me say this. Converted to the Christ is not converted by the Christ. Converted to the Christ, Jesus, is not converted by the Christ. Because converted to the Christ means simply that you've come to him and you've started a true walk. And we have seen in our fellowship uh, a variety and an assortment of so-called people who've come to Christ. But it's the being converted by the Christ. It's letting Jesus have his way. That's the kicker. Recently we have a brother and a sister who came to the fellowship. They wanted to hear what we had to say there and they truly were blessed. Brother James and Sister Gwen. Now, Brother James because I'm not mentioning any surnames. He had a wife. I think this is a very solid example of once saved, always saved. Garbage. He had a wife, had a wife, and she was born again, she spoke with other tongues. He even said she sang in tongues and she was the fair-haired lady of the fellowship. Well, he found out down the road she was uh, having sexual relationships, not with one man or two, but many. And then it came to the place where she could no longer... Uh, remain in the council of the godly. She could not, no longer would her conscience allow her to stay in the house because he had a conviction in a conscience. So she moved on and she said, I love the world and I'm going back. Well, there you go. Now, that's an example of a woman who was converted to Christ, but not converted by Christ. That's an example of a woman who believed there was another way. Hey? But they say... Once you come to Jesus, that's it. It's all done and dusted. Jesus is going to sort it and get you there no matter what you do. You really believe the behaviour of this woman, repetitious immorality, while singing in tongues and, and, and speaking in tongues and jumping up and down like a pig on a pogo stick, you really believe that that's acceptable. That's a demonstration of uh, once saved, always saved. <laughs> There's no such thing. That's why the Lord uses the words, you must continue if you're going to be saved. You, you, you must endure if you're going to be saved. If you neglect so great a salvation, how shall you be saved? If you drift, how shall you be saved? Huh? 
So, to be converted to Christ is one thing. That's only the start. But to be converted by Christ, that happens through the truth. He said, I am the truth. There's nothing else that can convert us, beatify us, canonize us, change us, deliver us, strengthen us, empower us, except the word. Okay. We must continue to the end. That salvation to the uttermost. Now, I'm going to ask the question. What I've said here this morning, is, is this what your pastor has told you? Is this what the pastors tell their congregation at the Baptist church? the Pentecostal church on a Sunday? Eh? Is this what they say? Is this what they teach in the Seventh-day Adventist and the, the Mormon church? Is this what they teach? Huh? Or is the pastor too afraid to tell the congregation this, lest uh, people don't attend anymore, unless there's an uproar? Now, if people don't attend, that means the finances drop. The finances drop. That's not good for them. And most churches today are about them, aren't they? Not the Lord. So let's read in John 6 and see about this once saved, always saved. John 6. John chapter 6 and I'm going to read from this let me say John 6 and the verse is 16 Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying, who can understand it? Huh? And then verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. And Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? Do you also want to leave? Go back to the world? Got too hard. And Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You are, or should say, you have the words of eternal life. John six sixty nine. Also we have come to believe and, and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But the living God doesn't have a son, does he? He's, he's, Jesus is the living God. So does Jesus have a son called Jesus? <laughs> no. The Father has a son called Jesus. The Christ is the Son 
of the living God. It, but he's God too. And he's also the son of man. He's also the man from Galilee. Hey? He's also the bright and morning star. He's also the great I am, the I am he, the one who was and the one who is, the one who's coming and the one who's here. It's Jesus, the friend of the poor. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. But he is the son He's the son of the living God, as Peter said. Also, John 6, 69, also we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, you can't argue with that, can you? Right? You can't argue with that. They went back. You can't go back from something you were... If I'm living in Brisbane and then I go to Sydney and live there for a while and then I go back, I must have been there before because you can't go back to something where you were not. <laughs> Oh, you can't, no, you can't lose your salvation. There's nothing to be done. Right? If there's nothing to be done, why did they go back? Because what Jesus was wanting done was too hard for them. It's, you know when things are too hard? Because you don't want to do it. Right? See, if we don't really love Jesus and we're just man pleasers and uh, woman pleasers and youth pleasers, or we're a coward or selfish or unfaithful, we just go back. We will we'll be hopelessly held bound, won't we? And there's other scriptures to go with that that we can sharpen up. Sharpen up on. In um, Hebrews. Because we're driving the nail home here today. And we're covering quite a large spectrum of doctrine here. Hebrews three twelve. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Brethren, and you go to Hebrews three one. Um, it says, therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, the Christ Jesus, holy brethren. And they were partaking of the heavenly call. And then he says in verse 12, you have to beware. So we've got to beware. We have to beware too. That's another thing to be done. Beware. What do you mean, beware? You, where am I to be? You're to be in Christ. You're to be found in Him. You're to be found in right standing with Him. Huh? You have to also beware with a W A R E. Not just B E W E A R. You got to know where you are to be, but you also got to beware. You got to be on the alert. Beware, brethren. He's saying in verse thirteen, uh, verse twelve, Hebrews three. Beware, brethren. It's not once saved, always saved. 
Adin. Verse 13, Hebrews 3. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Hardened through sin. For we have become partakers of Christ. If, if we hold the beginning of our confidence or of our faith steadfast to the end. If you go to the end, You'll live with Christ if you go to the end. What do you think of that? If you go to the end. If you continue. So, just going back there um, to Timothy, let's just jog our memory here. If my memory serves me well. 2 Timothy 2 and the verses 11. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we should also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. That's what he's going to do at the stand. He's going to do, I don't know you. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. If we deny him, he'll also deny us. Remember Matthew seven twenty one to 23. Lord, Lord, we, we prophesy. We cast out devils, but they denied the Lord. And there's many ways you can deny the Lord. If you're wondering about that, you get my teaching on deny, are you denying the Lord? Like Peter denied the Lord, he denied he knew him. You know, we deny the Lord when we don't do what he says. And if you deny him, he'll deny you. He'll deny he even knows you. He'll <laughs> say, I don't know you. Go away from me. But there's nothing to be done. There's nothing to be done. If 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 we die with him, if we endure, if we deny him, if we are faithless. But there's there's nothing to be done, the Baptist Church says. Oh, it's a hoax. It's a religious money making hoax. The Baptist Church worldwide has some of the most lucrative printing companies you can think of. I mean, just look at Billy Graham, dear me. Just have a look at his track record. It's disgusting. He's compromised with every religion you can think of. I've got articles independent of me and my writing and they just tell it the way it is documented documented reliable sources of where he got his uh, um, doctorate of theology and the whole the whole kit and caboodle box and dice it's shabby it's a sham who would want it? Who would want the fame he had and be the person he is at heart relating to Christ? I wouldn't want that for a billion dollars. I'd rather be some unknown hobo that's heart is right with Jesus. Because he's got a string of offences against his name regarding Christ. I'll tell you now, one of the biggest compromises that ever hit evangelical land. So many people have been deceived by the wicked churches, haven't they? They think there's another way. They think they know better. Well, Billy Graham, he thought there was another way. 
he 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 was getting all the um, all the exhortations from Mother Teresa, and he's on every show you can think of, every television show. And the Roman Catholics were rubbing his back, and he was rubbing their back. <laughs> Hey, he was a friend of all the, the cardinals and popes, and he, he drinking vino with the popes, and just like that James Robertson and Betty Robertson. They were up there with the pope. They think they're going places. So it's sad, isn't it? Like Benny Hinn, you know. They they get their little interview with the Pope and then everyone thinks they're someone out of the box. You know what? I'd be totally ashamed. I'd be totally ashamed of myself if I had a photo of me and the Pope together. I'd be ashamed. Totally ashamed. But Kenneth Copeland... Oh, he thinks he thinks that's something great. Huh? To have his photo taken with a man. Pope Francis. I call him a man in a white gown who's unsaved. That's what the Pope is to me. He's a man in a white gown who's unsaved. According to scripture, anyway. Not according to me. Because if he was saved, he wouldn't have that white gown, ridiculous, ridiculous white dress on. And he wouldn't be hiding in, in a mansion in Italy, in Rome. If he was saved, if he really knew Jesus, and was born of Jesus, converted to Jesus, and converted by Jesus. He's a liar. He's of the devil. Because he likes to think him and every other pope are the vicars of Christ. And that is an outright lie. There's no priesthood, only a spiritual priesthood. And those who are of the spiritual priesthood and kings and priests unto God. They are those who are converted to Christ and converted by Christ, and no one else. Okay? There's no other way. <laughs> There's no other way. The only way, that's our message today, the only way is Jesus. I'd be ashamed of myself to have my photo taken with any of them. If Brian Houston or Frank, uh, I was going to say Frank Houston, Brian Houston or Francis the Talking Mule or, or Benny Hinn or Joyce Meyer or Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland, Jesse the Supplanters, any of them wanted to get a selfie with me, I'd laugh in their face. I'd say, you are joking. <laughs> Why would I want to be numbered with you? The Lord said to turn your back on them. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. Haughty, headstrong, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure, lo lovers of God. Turn your back on them. Don't get selfies with them. Turn your back on them. Walk away. Just walk on by. Dun, 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 dun. Walk on by. Don't give heed. Don't give heed to the lion tongue.
just walk on by. Walk on by. Just keep going. Hey? There's no other way. Only one way. The only way. No other way to escape damnation. Hey? Except to do what the Lord says. Second Thessalonians 1, 8 and 9. You're going to take flaming vengeance upon those who know not God and those who do not obey the Lord Jesus the Christ. Hey? We don't want to be numbered with the headstrong, the unteachable, the proud and arrogant, and disobedient. Lovers of pleasure, not lovers of God. Hey? So, I'll rest my case there again. We've had a wonderful morning. It, it, we, there's a few gems there, isn't there? I mean, it sounds like... Um, when Jesus said his way is the only way, it sounds like uh, Jesus was a bigot. <laughs> hey? We all know what a bigot is. Everyone else is wrong. And they're the only one right. Is that right? A bigot. Everyone else is wrong. They pull everything else to pieces, just like Jeremiah. Pulled it all down, uprooted it all, destroyed it, and started afresh. Hey? There's m much to unlearn, and there's more to learn. <laughs> uh, just walk on by. Dun, dun, dun. Walk on by Taking heed To what Jesus says Living out your walk Living out your walk With all of your heart Just walk on by da 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 Walk on by. Don't go in the way of the sinner. Don't stand there, not for a second. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. Just walk on by. Uh, 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 uh. Walk on by. Turn your back on them. Dun, da, da, da. Don't stop. Just walk on by. Keep walking. Don't look back. <laughs> Amen. Keep on walking, don't look back. Look back, don't look back. I'm going to give all the glory to Jesus today. Hey? The only way is the way of the cross that leads home. The way of the Christ. I'm going to get side of the gates of light. Must go by the way of the cross, because the way of the cross leads home. Hey? The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. 
needs to know as we onward go that the way of the cross leads home and needs go home by the blood sprinkle way the path that the Saviour trod if I'm gonna get sight of the gate of light the way of the cross Leads ho 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 Yes the way of the cross leads ho 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 The way of the cross leads ho needs to know as I onward go The way of the cross leads ho need to go home by the blood sprinkled away the path that the Saviour trod Amen Oh, there's nothing to be done. Oh, yes, there is. I give you all the glory, Jesus. And ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, to bless all listeners here today. With the opportunity and the ability to understand what was said here today. Amen.